All right, so I want to look at real numbers and properties of real numbers. I'm going to kind of do the next section in the, the book in, in, in two parts, and I'm just going to look at the properties of real numbers themselves. And these things are going to create all the rules that we have. So first off, real numbers, which gets that double R, um, we can look at as being a set. And I think your book does a better picture than I tried to the other day. Now, these are infinite, so there's an infinite amount of things in here, and we'll put the irrational numbers over here, and we'll put the rational numbers here. But the rational numbers also contain the integers, and the integers also contain whole numbers, and the whole numbers also contain the natural numbers. And so these are the language units, the weird little nouns um, that we have invented in this um, language of mathematics. And now we're going to look at the grammar. And this grammar is going to extend. We're eventually going to extend it into algebra. But I want to do one other thing here. I want to take real numbers and I want to divide this into imaginary so we have real numbers and imaginary numbers. And we have complex numbers that can contain both and a thing that is a blend of the both. And so there's complex numbers. And I'll give it a big C. All of the rules we're going to talk about now we'll call the rules of real numbers, the properties of real numbers. It holds true for complex numbers. Um, Complex numbers have a, a unique and interesting space that's useful in algebra, but only at the upper ends of algebra. So let's look at properties of real numbers. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to, and, and these things are, are, are what we see these numbers do. Um, and we're gonna use these to build other things. So the first thing we have to do is recognize that we're gonna have some rules for addition and some rules for multiplication that might be similar. And we're going to define these. So the first thing we, we say is addition is closed, which means that if I add a plus b, that equals c. And so a, b, and c are all real numbers. They all exist in real numbers. And what this means is if I do addition, I don't make up a new number. Now remember, we made up new numbers, types, new types of numbers, right? When we decided to divide numbers and we didn't get an integer, we had to make rational numbers. When we couldn't make a rational number out of a square root, we had to make a rational numbers. And so addition being closed means if I add any two real numbers, I get a unique real number. And it also means that a plus b will always equal c. And we had, and so this is called closure. And we get the same thing, closure for multiplication. a times b always gives me the same c. And so, so we're able to do these operations. Um, in real numbers. And so we can manipulate real numbers with other real numbers and get new real numbers. And the pattern is always the same, always a unique answer. And we don't magically jump into another set. Right? We can be in any of those subsets of real numbers, but, but there is no you know, jumping into complex numbers from these operations. Well, that gives us an identity. And we have a very specific identity operator, or number, which is zero for addition, because a plus zero is a again. If I add zero to any number, I get my number back. And the identity for a multiplication is any number times one is itself. These identities build most of the tricks we use in algebra. They build most of the tricks we use to do other things like, like um, 
common denominators. Being able to multiply something by one and always return itself. And you've already seen me use, you know, like square root of five over square root of five. Well, that equals one. And so I can multiply by square root of five um, over square root of five to rationalize the denominator. And I haven't changed the value of the thing I'm doing. And so these properties of real numbers uh, become very useful for us because they let, let them ma manipulate them. Well, this means we also have um, a negative inverse or an opposite, depending on which language choice you choose to use here. And what that says is a plus some number equals zero. And in our case, it gets a negative sign. All right, we'll find when we'll do some special algebras where we don't, it's not the negative, but it is an opposite or a, neg um, um, a negative inverse or an additive inverse, I guess. Yeah, I guess additive inverse would be the better word, additive inverse. And then we have a multi multiplicative inverse, which is a times one over a equals one. And notice it's a way of making the identity operator or the identity number out of other numbers. And so these are true for all real numbers and they'll help us manipulate things. Now with these two inverses, we can rewrite addition or rewrite subtraction. I can make subtraction and define, whoops, I can to find how I zoom in. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let me recenter here. There we go. And let me come down. I can redefine, I can give a definition of subtraction um, such that a minus b is equal to a plus negative b. I can write subtraction so that it's an addition. So I really only have one thing I need to do, which is learn additions. The sign re reflects a change in, in the type, uh, the number, and specifically an inverse. And then and I can change my definition of division. I can say a divided by b is equal to a times 1 over b. And this 1 over b is called a reciprocal. reciprocal. And notice how that's r related to the inverse, the inverse functions that we use. And so, and we also say that addition and subtraction are inverse operations of each other, and multiplication and division are inverse operations of each other, and it's because of these rules or properties. I shouldn't say they're not rules someone made up, they're things that we see happen with numbers. Well, then in, we'll say that they're commutative. A plus B is equal to B plus A. The order I add numbers in doesn't matter. Um, this isn't true for all types of objects. There are things called vectors. Uh, well, there are different groupings where commutation doesn't work. Um, and we'll make some systems where that happens. But multiplication is also additive. And again, in vectors, um, when you multiply things, it doesn't commute. But for real numbers, it does. The order I multiply in doesn't matter. Let me, wait. I'm doing a list of additions and multiplications here. And then and they're also associative. Where I hang out, and again, this is the addition side, it doesn't matter. I can add B and C first or I can add A and B first, I will still get the same answer. And the same with multiplication. What friends they choose to associate with doesn't matter in the answer. And so multiplication is also associative. Drop my pen. And then in there's a linking one, which is called uh, these distribute. Which is if I multiply something, by an addition, it's the same as multiplying by each term in the addition. And a good way to visualize that is 
is I can find an area of an object by multiplying the length times the width. Well, I can multiply a times b and find the area in here, and a times c and find the area in here, and add them together to get the whole area. And that's this side of the distributive. Or I can add b and c together and multiply that by a to find all of the area. And that's this side of this relationship. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to explore these properties of real numbers. Real numbers do this. Complex numbers do, it, do this also. And you're going to find when we learn new tricks in algebra or new ways of manipulating numbers, they always follow this behavior. And in following this behavior, that helps us create new ways of doing things. In essence, these are the only thing that real numbers can do. They can only follow these properties and we will invent different symbols to exploit this so that we can find the patterns they mean um, that the patterns under we can find more pattern and get more meaning from numbers i guess is probably the better way in english to say that all right i'm going to continue we're going to follow the, the class notes for section five and continue on